Sup guys, Hicking here, bringing you a uh, new uh, discussion news video uh, regarding the uh, Resident Evil Netflix series, the live action one. So we just had two trailers for this uh, released. Uh, I do it like that. Do I do it like that? <laughs> How is it? What's the signal for two? I'll do two like this. So we've had two trailers released uh, for the uh, Netflix series yesterday. Um, I don't know when I'm going to upload this because I'm going to be busy tonight. So yeah. Um, and some new info came out, some new information came out, um, regarding the, uh, uh, you know, the canon of this series, because, you know, when you look at the trailer, it's like, yeah, this is its own thing. Apparently it's not. No. No. Apparently this is, this is, uh, canon to the games, or at least the games are canon to the series. In other words, this is still an alternative world, yes, but it's using the games as its backstory. In other words, the games, the stories of the games happened. In this case, Resident Evil 1 to Resident Evil 7 are canon in this universe of the live action Netflix series, which means those events did happen. Which means that the, uh, that the Wesker, sorry about this, that the Wesker of this uh, series, uh, played by Lance Reddick, is in fact the Albert Wesker from Resident Evil 5 who died. Now, uh, yeah, this is very weird. This is very weird. Um, so I got, I got this, I got this message from a, a blazing ocean. Well done. <laughs> uh, thanks for that, by the way. Uh, he gave me this. Uh, he commented on my video, uh, my trailer reaction for the series, and he said this is confirmed to be in the same universe as the video games. The director said Raccoon City, the original did blow up, and Wesker, the white blonde guy with Matrix clothes, fell into a volcano in RE5 and died in this timeline. Uh, how is he back as a black guy with a blank slate? Watch the show. I bet he turned. Yeah, okay. and he gave some explanations about how that could have happened. So I went out and I and I, and I tried to verify this to see if this was legit because I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe like, oh, this is actually like an alternative continuation of the of, of the game's storyline. And uh, yeah, apparently there were interviews where they confirmed this. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if this is the director or, or one of the producers or not, but uh, it, it, the guy's name is Dab. He said it reads, "The games are the backstory." Dab said. So everything that happened in the games happened in this world in the timeline that it happened. Uh, everything that happened, so everything that happened in the games happened in this world in the timeline that it happened. So if something happened in a game released in 1998, like Raccoon City being nuked in this world, that happened also in 1998. We are very aware that Albert Wesker was blown up on a volcano by a rocket launcher, he said. There is a very good reason why Wesker is back, and it does not come down to the fact that he was wearing lava and rocket launcher proof clothes. So we're very w aware of that. It will be dealt with. So, this is basically a sequel to, to whatever takes place after RE7, essentially. Now, th there's nothing here to say that it takes place after, but I think that... I think I think that was an interview saying that if that in fact it does take place after that game, which would make sense because that was the last game to come out in that time period when this series was being conceived. There's no way that if had they'd have had enough time to include elements of RE8 in this. And I've heard rumors. I don't know if this is true or not. I've heard rumors. I don't know if this is a uh, blazing ocean. If you told me this as well, apparently apparently uh, Ethan Winters is going to show up in in this series. Um, let's see. Uh, and then there's the whole thing to do with Resident Evil 9 as well, which is apparently going to be called Apocalypse, and which is supposed to rumored are to be the main, to be the last numbered title in the series. Uh, so, uh, search for the IGN interview with the producers of the show. It takes place in the video games universe. In the trailer, there is a scene where there's a burned body in a healing tank, and another where, uh, where Black Wesker is touching his face like he just got a new body. So yeah, I did, I did notice that. I went back and I watched the trailers for this, and yeah, there is a part where it looks like Reddick sort of like touching himself, like almost like. Hmm, like this is my new face, my new body, etc, etc. Um, the daughters could be experiments of clones, since clones are, are, are also are a thing in Resident Evil 6 game. Technically speaking, uh, those were, they're not, they're, they're not, they're, those weren't technically clones in RE6. Uh, those, those were just taking a person and transforming them into someone else. That was not cloning being done in RE6. Uh, the only times we get any confirmation of clones in the series is Resident Evil Umbrella Chronicles, 
and the only clone officially we know in the series is Sergei Vladimir, uh, the villain of that game, where it's revealed that he had several clones, in this case 10 copies of himself created and cloned in order to create the tyrants, or some of the tyrants that we see in the series. And that is the only time cloning has ever brought up and mentioned in the, in, in the, in the game's uh, continuity. Other than that, there, there is no big clone thing, like the way that the uh, Paul W.S. and Anderson movies did, which was just ridiculous. Like, that was just a case of going way beyond what the games uh, attempted to do. Um, uh... Uh, a music artist is also playing Ethan in this show, so yeah, let's let's also spoil that Ethan is still alive. But so this is the thing. Uh, like I said, from my understand, this takes place uh, like uh, like RE one to seven happened. Which case, in which case they haven't said if RE eight happened. In which case, Ethan would technically be alive after the events of RE seven. So in a way, they're doing their own thing. But this is confusing as hell, and at the same time intriguing because now, as a video game purist, as a game fan of this franchise. It does make me very curious about wanting to watch this series now because if this is technically a sequel set after the video games it's making me very curious now to go in and watch this and be like okay so this is Albert Wesker how did he survive and the only thing I can come up with is is that if they're, if they're taking Revelations 2 into account then Alex Wesker would have to be involved somehow taking whatever however she like whatever remains she could find of Albert Wesker's body maybe and transferring his thoughts into a new body in which case uh, these girls that we have as well and you know that's if RE6 is canon in this universe as well in which case he does have a son in which case all the other characters are still alive and maybe around and this also gives uh, more credits to uh, to why uh, this takes place in 2022 you know the whole new raccoon city like you know it, it could have taken place in 2010 or something but it takes specifically place in 2022 which would be a good what four four or five years after the events of re7 uh and and you know maybe a year after re8 if they choose to if they had time to even implement that uh but and maybe this all gonna wipe the slate clean in that regards. Maybe RE7 didn't happen, maybe 6 didn't happen, and it, and it just continues off from where RE5 or Revelations 2 ended, in which case, yeah. But uh, this makes me more curious to see this now. But this is also intriguing because, because, and this is a big if, is this gonna tie into future games? Is this their attempt to sort of set up the future of the RE games coming out because and, 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 and here we are on this Im ima imagine if imagine if we do get RE6 uh, sorry RE9 and it is called Apocalypse and it, it does literally end with with something happening where the world actually completely ends and then we get this big massive reveal where, of, of, of Lance Reddick just coming into the game you know, them having gotten him to actually play like a new version of Albert Wesker, like a resurrected version of Albert Wesker, and like that would be like the craziest way to end it, and then be like, yeah, this ties in with the with the series. But um, you know, first of all, the series would have to be a success. Like it's coming out this year, it's coming out in two months. It would have to be a success in order to sort of tie into Resident Evil Nine when it comes out in, I'm assuming, either 2024 or 25. Uh, but you know, this is all going on the. This is all going on uh, w w with the assumption that uh, because RE9, or in this case, there is a game called RE Apocalypse, and it's supposed to be nine. That's that's with the assumption going that that's what they're trying to do. But uh, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know anything about that game. We don't know if it's just a placeholder name, etc., etc. But um, for now, the only thing we do need to know about this series is that it, it takes place after at least at least, from my understand, after the events of RE5. And maybe RE7 if Ethan is actually in this, like, uh, which is which is weird, which is like, what? So we are going to get other game characters in this, like, what? Um, but maybe this is just an attempt by the marketing team to get game um, fanatics like us to actually watch this show, to give it a chance. I, if this is the case, I will give it a chance. I will actually give it a chance. But if I watch it and I start to get, like, BS... Um, uh, elements to it where where it's not a proper sequel in reality and and then they're just taking the very basics of what happened in those games and they're trying to tell the very forced woke story I'm gonna hate it but if they're actually trying to tell a new story but that takes place off the games and you know uh, you know as a, as a new audience member it will give you the basic elements and as a game fan you'll understand everything it's saying then that's intriguing for me enough to be like, okay, I'm I'm enjoying this. I'm giving this a chance. I can accept this sort of alternative world. In which case, 
well done actually like this might be the first time they do sort of like a live action or Resident Evil medium properly because uh, they've already done stuff like this with the CGI series like uh, the movies like those take place in the game world and now we're getting a live action that takes place in the game world too but it's after um, and I don't mind that if that's what they're doing with it cool because then it means that most likely we will get uh, the game characters in this in this show, maybe. Like, if this does well and we get a season two, maybe we'll get Chris Redfield and Claire and Jill and all them other characters that survived. And then maybe we'll get their backstories, like, oh, what happened What happened to them after the events of RE5? Like, well, what happened to Jill after her whole brainwashing? What happened to Barry, like, after everything we're doing with her? Natalia, that, like, are they going to bring that in? Like, it'll be curious to see. But, uh, yeah, for now... Uh, for now, I'd say let's just see how this goes. Let's see the reception to this. And if it is good, if it is well, and if video game fans do actually say, yeah, this is actually pretty decent, I am more than likely happy to give this a watch. But uh, yeah, uh, very unexpected news. Can't believe it, personally. But uh, let's see where it goes, guys. Let's see where it goes. And remember, guys, to like and subscribe, please. As always, do remember that. And yeah, I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care and bye.